Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Alliance. We're really delighted to have the opportunity to share with you some of our work, some of our thinking, as we set out to become what I know in terms of the Zero Project is called a community of practice, a community of knowledge, as we bring some extraordinary organizations together that are each endeavoring to enhance the life chances, the employment prospects of people with disabilities by enabling employers through job boards to more readily recruit people with disabilities on the basis of capability and potential. So we have 40 minutes where we're going to share the experience of our members and talk a bit about what we hope to achieve through this collaboration and then have time with you uh, in terms of Q and A's to, to answer your more specific questions. So the real challenge is going to be how do these really interesting programs, projects, companies, businesses, explain in the five minutes that I'm going to give them how marvelous they are, the impact they're having, how it all works. Um, but I, I'm sure that they will rise to the challenge. So I'm going to start with asking Gui from Egalité in Brazil to introduce his organization. Gui. Hello, Susan. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this great group. Uh, my name is Gui Braga, and I'm the CEO and founder of Egalité. We're a company from Brazil specialized in the employment of people with disabilities. And for the past five years, we've been using technology to remove barriers. And since Brazil is such a large country, to get closer and scale our, our impact. Uh, our recruitment platform, uh, I, I say it's not adapted for people with disabilities, was built specifically for this public. So we work with uh, all different kinds of disabilities, and this is, uh, for the technology point of view, very challenging because we need to accommodate different aspects of accessibility and user experience. Um, and our, our main focus is to look at the potential of the candidate and leave behind all bias, stigma, and focus that many times we have only in the disability and trying to uh, um, not focus specifically on very important points. We use an algorithm and that we help to uh, analyze hard skills, but also the behavioral profile test. We developed from scratch with the partnership of a university in Brazil, a behavioral profile test that help us to understand not only the resume, but the person who is behind and what is the best job opportunity, uh, not based only on the experience that they have, but what they believe, uh, what kind of workplace it's good for them. Using this technology, we help to employ over 7,000 people with disabilities in Brazil. And today we have a database of 65,000 candidates. We served over 300 companies. Um, and our main focus is to keep growing the work in Brazil. And we're also a part of the impact transfer program of the Zero Project that uh, has been helping us to take our work outside of Brazil and to a few countries in 2021. Um, for us, it's a great honor to be a part of this group. And what we hope to achieve is basically um, creating a more inclusive workplace. It's very challenging what we have to do because it's not only about recruiting. We have to think about the corporate culture we have to think about uh, how are we actually measuring and evaluating people with disabilities in a way that uh, can be equal. So uh, it's very hard to, to find such a qualified group that we can openly discuss and try to find out the best practices because as we've seen from previous meetings that we have, uh, we have basically the same problems around the world. It doesn't matter if you are in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America, you have very similar issues that uh, we are facing. And with this group, I believe that 
we can um, create great impact with with uh, in a collaborative way. Thank you very much. A brilliant exemplary performance of only four minutes. Excellent. Gabrielle Makalongo, introduce your organization, please. Thank you, Susan. I'm Gabriel Marcolongo. I'm the CEO and founder of Incluime.com. Uh, we founded Incluime in 2013, aimed at helping people with disabilities to get a job. Uh, we started doing that in, in Argentina, and even in Argentina and in all the region, the unemployment rate of people with disabilities is uh, about 70%. It, it means that three out of four people with disabilities are unemployed. And as Guy mentioned this is a global problem, so we are trying to bridge this disability gap, uh, helping <coughs> companies to meet employers or potential employers with disabilities. Um, we start doing that in 20 we managed to scale from Argentina to Chile, Peru, Uruguay, Paraguay, Colombia, and Mexico, and we become the largest database of people with disabilities looking for a job. Nowadays, we are having 200,000 people with disabilities registered, and we are having the experience of working with 500 big organizations all across Latin America. And learning from this, we shift our view from labor inclusion to social labor inclusion, because we learn that uh, it's to, for a person with a disability to get a job, it's only the first step then this person needs to be a full member of the society. And the way we are doing that is working on financial inclusion of people with disabilities. And then we are also working on the accessibility of cities. And then we are helping different uh, minorities to become fully members of the society. And as, and as an example of this, we are working with migrants with disabilities, helping those migrants and to become part of the society and also to, to get a job. In this journey, I would say that we learn that several things can be done in order to fully uh, enable possibilities of people with disabilities. One of those is to change the culture of companies. So this is the reason why we are creating not only a, a shop board, but also a, a way to transfer knowledge to companies and organizations in order to help these companies to be more inclusive, not only thinking about potential employees, but also to create uh, and develop services for customers with disabilities. Uh, we like to say that uh, is it better to develop products and services for all the people, not, not for the ones who are not facing a disability. And it's been an honor to, to be here and, and to be able to scale what all these organizations are doing. And we are really excited to, to look forward on what's going on on 2021 and how can we create a better world for people with disabilities together. Thank you. Can I just for clarification, when you said that you were also enabling immigrants to access jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you don't mean just immigrants who have disabilities. You're saying yeah, immigrants with disabilities. It's still disabilities is the focus. OK, I think that's just important to register. Thank you. Right. Next, um, I think it's my ability. Wolfgang. Thank you, Susan. It's also a pleasure to be part of this great group and I've already seen and heard many similarities and, and uh, common ideas, which feels really good. Um, so uh, let me talk two or three minutes about my ability. We are also originally a job board, which was a, our oldest idea of how to improve the lives of people with disabilities. But at the moment and over years, we have developed into a social enterprise that uh, basically wants to change the culture of companies, the same as uh, Incluem and Gabriel said before, because we think it's not only about posting jobs and trying to connect online users looking for jobs and companies, but it's much more around it. So what we um, have developed and what our focus is first is um, we want to uh, convince companies that it's worth a strategy um, to be more inclusive and then to offer solutions like we analyze the situations of the company and then we offer solutions and these kind of these solutions are, are different. Um, uh, one, one example is awareness trainings, uh, even online, we call them sensing journeys. 
Other solutions are we have um, recruiting programs, so we connect students with disabilities with companies in a matching program in um, Austria, Germany, Switzerland. Um, and of course, we also have many uh, individual consulting programs um, that also cover accessibility, not, not only of cities, but also of organizations. Um, or we, we consult in um, digital accessibility, uh, inclusive websites and all these kind of things. So we are very uh, broad, but our main focus is, and that's the main idea, we want to motivate the business organizations uh, to be more inclusive because we think that's the biggest leverage. It's in their hand when all companies say we want to be more engaged in that field, when we want to be more open, when we want to offer uh, fair chances to everyone, then, then the most thing will, will change. Our mission is uh, maybe also the question of why we're doing it. Um, our mission is that we, at the end, want to contribute to a fair um, society that offers um, um, uh, chances for everyone and then no one is left behind just because of a disability or whatever other uh, circumstance. Our team of uh, 30 at the moment um, is um, half of them have a disability. So we're also a very inclusive team, which is also kind of part of our DNA. Uh, we want to wanna learn ourselves and transmit this to our network. And uh, we also consider ourselves being a social enterprise, which means that we want to in, uh, develop and offer services that are paid by the market, basically. All, always with a strong social mission that we want to uh, lower the number of uh, unemployment rate of people with disabilities and to create this, this uh, more inclusive society. Um, when we talk about the, the job board as such, this is the, the issue of today's uh, conversation discussion. Um, what we do there is uh, our platform is called My Ability Jobs. It's also the domain. Um, we are we have been working um, uh, for over 10 years now in Austria. Just recently, some month ago, we also launched our job board in Germany. And the idea is uh, maybe to develop this um, in, in, within the European Union in the future. What we are now uh, focused on, on is uh, first we offer companies to post their jobs there and they need to pay for that, even if it's not more expensive than maybe the market leader tariffs, but we it's worth the price, which is a very important principle in our um, in our opinion. And at the same time, um, uh, it's also an important issue to offer um, uh, employer branding options so that the companies find their surrounding and um, a place where they can talk about their opinion, about their culture towards uh, inclusion and people with disabilities. Uh, and with this, we have been growing uh, steadily. Uh, we, we also work together with an external software provider who has programmed our uh, site um, uh, together with, uh, with accessibility experts. Um, and we have, uh, we have seen that the system works quite well so that we can focus on the conversations with the companies. We're not an IT company, but we are a company that tries to persuade as many companies as possible to, to become more inclusive. Um, and what I I'm very happy about is that uh, after so many years um, we have met, we have had the chance to meet allies like you, you guys are. Uh, it feels really great. Um, we, we felt a bit like lonely fighters in terms of job boards for people with disabilities. Um, and uh, it feels really good that uh, when I have a quick look at your websites, that there are so many similar ideas and, and, and uh, offerings and, and um, yeah, opinions so that I am really looking forward to our future talks and to this alliance. Thank you, Susan. So this is going to have a therapeutic benefit for the members. <laughs> well, exactly. Thank you. Excellent. And I like this, what you said about paying because it's worth it, because I think what you haven't all referenced is the fact that you all charge the employer because you're offering a service and they pay to recruit everybody else. So why shouldn't they pay to recruit talent that has a disability? I think that's a principle that the audience you know, really should take a look at. Yeah. John, tell us about your job board and more. Hi, Susan, and hi, everybody. It's uh, great to be a part of this incredible group, and thank you for bringing us all together, and thanks to the Zero Project as well for hosting this. Um, I'm John Kemp. I'm president and CEO of the Viscardi Center. We also have a school here for medically fragile children, kindergarten through age 21, so our graduates go to off to uh, college at the rate of 86%, which is higher than public schools and other students with disabilities throughout the United States. So we, we really create children who are thriving and they're looking for employment and we want that. 
the Disability Employment Source uh, at the National Business and Disability Council at the Viscardi Center, isn't that a mouthful, uh, is a, a very wonderful resource. It's actually a portal or a gateway to reaching uh, literally 2 million jobs that are out there throughout the United States. Uh, 200,000 employers put in these jobs on a, on a daily basis, but to have the right to access it, you have to come through our portal. You pay a, uh, companies pay a fee to be able to access it. And we serve both sides of the equation. We work very closely with our members who are joining in, into this portal. Uh, and we work very closely with people with disabilities who are looking for jobs. We're governed by some principles that I think apply to all of us in this alliance. Uh, we, we don't think always, uh, and the companies that we work with, we don't always think about just profit. This is not about profit, it's about purpose. Uh, we don't think about it as corporate policy and compliance. It's really about social responsibility, as Wolfgang was saying. Uh, that is really important, especially as this burgeoning movement of uh, environmental, social and governance ESG movement is taking place uh, in the United States and throughout the world through multinational corporations. This is not a standalone issue. It's connected to an ecosystem that supports multi, uh, multiple individuals and intersectionality with a lot of different uh, groups of peoples. And I think that's an important point to make here that Disability is a cross cutter across all types of individuals. Um, we don't think about employees and jobs necessarily. We think about people, work and skills. So we see this shift moving. Another principle is that we're moving from workforce as an expense to workforce as an asset. <laughs> and I think that's what we're all about. Um, if I'm reading all of us right, we're really making sure that the employers who join our network and get into this uh, disability employment source really see us individuals that, with disabilities as a complete asset to enhancing the company's performances on all levels. Another principle is a lot of times metrics are measured in the backwards way. They're looking backwards at what we've done. Uh, we look at forward looking value metrics and that is I think a going to be something that's going to roll out. And lastly, a lot of, of companies measure their performance over quarters and year to year, quarters to quarters. Uh, we look at this as generational. This is a generational movement, and this is the beginning of a generation uh, where companies and people with disabilities are going to think and operate very differently. So companies pay us a, a fee to be able to access this portal uh, and People with disabilities who come in to access it can access their jobs as well as many other jobs in uh, throughout the United States. Why do I think this alliance is so brilliant as I think Susan is and is that is that she has the vision to be able to see a lot of different very good organizations and my colleagues uh, represented here. We represent so many companies that are multinational to begin with and harmonizing what goes on in the United States with what goes on in Europe and South America and Africa is very important to a lot of companies. They want to be as efficient and effect as effective as they can and harmonizing this is really a great project. So that's a little bit about the uh, Disability Employment Source at the Viscardi Center and our National Business and Disability Council, but I'm really honored to be a part of the Alliance and with you, Susan. Thank you. Well, thank you. And I think actually, listening to you, John, we are seeing a shift here in terms of business leaders and people with disabilities starting to work together directly in a way that your programs facilitate. So you've got the Valuable 500, where we've got companies for the first time at that scale, multinationals committing to make it a leadership priority. You've got Purple Space and the Purple Light Up movement saying you need to learn directly from people with disabilities. And then we've got programs like yours that are facilitating that that connectivity brilliant and of course the ILO's global business disability network is nurturing national business disability networks in a way which again reinforces exactly the messages that you're all putting forward now finally but not least I want to turn to uh, Kenya where I'm sure it's a lot warmer than it is here in London um, Makina can you tell us a bit about Riziki source 
Hello, Susan. Thank you for this opportunity. Yes, it's warm and are. cold at the same time. Yes, uh, I, I'm Makena Karo. I work with Riziki Source. And uh, what we do at Riziki Source, our mission is to enable access of job opportunities to persons with disability. And how we go about it is uh, we work, uh, we use the use of technology where we work with directly with our users who are persons with disability. And uh, the candidates are able to register on board on, on our job boards uh, so as to be able to access job opportunities, the current job opportunities that are posted. So they can register through the mobile. So one doesn't have to have internet enabled mobile phone. They can register using a basic phone uh, by texting the word uh, Riziki and then they, they are on board on our platform and they can be able to access, they create their own profile and they can access uh, the, the services that we provide for our users. So currently we at Riziki Source, as we have been able to create job opportunities uh, a total of 193 so far. And uh, this year we were able, despite the challenges of COVID, we were able to uh, onboard 33 persons with disability, both direct employment and self-employment. And um, we also provide skills for our users who join our platform. And uh, out of that, we also charge consultancy fee for our companies who are registered on our platform. So far, we have 14 companies on board. And uh, the total number of our users that we have on our platform is so far we have six, 600 and, 603. So out of the 603, we have managed to place 193. So, so far, that's a good progress. And we hope to onboard other, other people other persons with disability. We not only target youths, we target uh, persons with disability across, across board in Kenya. And um, through this alliance, we will be able to interact and find ways in which we will be able to reach out to employers uh, in Kenya and more so across Africa. That way we'll be, we will learn and unlearn ways that, we, that will better, better better and enable Riziki source, um, be able to serve persons with disability from, from the end, from, from where we, we stand. Yeah. Thing is something we all have in common here is how do you persuade employers to, in a very uh, thoughtful way, begin to make the opportunities available and learn how to do things differently themselves. Now we've got a few minutes left. Thank you very much for a chance to open up to a bit of a panel discussion. So I wanted to, to kick off with a question that came to me today because I was talking to someone working in Africa actually, who's when I said we were doing the session, said, but I was talking to an HR director this morning and he was saying, well, we don't need these special job boards. I can never find them. Why don't disabled people just come through the normal job boards? And the disabled people can't find the job boards either. So so that's my question to you. I see, Makina, you're nodding. Why do we need special job boards? Why don't they just go through the normal job boards? I will give an example of our experience that we've had. Uh, we have had candidates uh, with, with, with hearing impairment. So when they are invited for interviews, the employers don't know that they, they require a sign language interpreter. So they are not prepared for a sign language interpreter. But through these job boards, uh, which specialize on persons with disability, they'll be able to, we, we inform our, uh, our employers that, that have partnered with us that, they, uh, by the way, uh, among the shortlisted candidates, the qualified candidate, uh, one of the candidates has an hearing impairment. So, out of that, we prepare them and also organize or connect them to a sign language interpreter. You see now we are making their work easier and we are making them employer, be able to be uh, inclusive and develop an inclusive culture in, in the organization. Yeah. Well, I so it's important. I would say you're simply helping them to treat people fairly. You know, inclusion can yes. come from that. Okay, yes, yes. that's a good example. Who Susan, else? Susan, this is John. Um, yeah. 
I would just add that I think that people with disabilities ought to be using all this, all the resources that are available to them, and that if going through a portal like this is is effective and helpful to them, they should use it. But they should also go directly to companies. On the company side, the company has to be making sure that it is ready to receive a wide variety of people with differing dis disabilities, making sure that their places are physically accessible, that they're technologically accessible, their websites are accessible. Uh, digital accessibility is critical in this day and age because most people are searching for jobs online. Is their website accessible? Are things captioned? Uh, you know, you never know who's going to come to your party, so you better be prepared to meet the, the widest range of uh, human characteristics that are uh, envision envisionable. So uh, I think we work on both sides of it, but go for it. You know, direct contact is the best and then portals like these are, are helpful. I believe we have um, a lot of challenge on, on what John mentioned about technology. Um, even though they have this big portals, big job boards, um, sometimes they don't focus on people with disabilities, even though we know that uh, there are over 1 billion people with disabilities in the world. But they don't focus on that and don't create the proper accessibility. And you also have a problem on, on how do you evaluate those candidates? Um, Susan, we've talked before and you mentioned a lot of uh, screening using video interviews. And sometimes it's really hard for a blind person to have access and know exactly what they do because the website does not have the proper accessibility. And I believe um, uh, there, there was also something very important Wolfgang mentioned about companies paying uh, because they see the value. Whenever um, we are still struggling with this culture by the company to prepare, by looking for uh, a specific job boards for people with disabilities, they are already showing that they want to take a step further. And hopefully, um, we won't have our same jobs in 10 to 15 years here as a specific job board. But um, until today, uh, I, I believe we have a lot of work to do, helping to shift this culture, making more accessible and helping companies to be more prepared to employ people with disabilities. That makes a lot of sense. Gabriel, did you want to come in on that challenge? Yeah, I fully agree on, on what Guy and Son mentioned before. And the, the goal for us, uh, and I think it's the goal for all the organizations that are present here, is to be no longer necessary. And in order to do that, we need to keep working on shift the, the culture of organizations and be more open to hire people with disabilities. Why do we exist, in, in particular in, in the case of Incluyeme, is that we start working with several companies that were having uh, diversity programs in place. But when we ask those companies if they are recruiting people with disabilities, they say that they never ever receive applicants with disabilities using their traditional channels. So, and then we ask our beneficiaries, uh, people with disabilities, asking them, okay, why you didn't apply to uh, companies using these traditional uh, solutions and the response was almost the same every time we ask uh, they were saying that that they went to show interviews that the last five minutes instead of lasting 40 minutes till one hour and they felt that it was an awkward interview because the interviewer doesn't knew how to ask questions or who or if it's okay to ask or not about the disability. So the reason why we created Incluyeme is that we need to build trust on both sides. And this trust building is saying uh, as a company that you are really open and, and you are welcoming applicants with disabilities and for uh, the beneficiaries, I mean, for the people with disabilities, that they are not going to be discriminated through the process and that the interviewers are going to be aware on how to interview applicants with disabilities. And building on this, 
we can guarantee that the people uh, are, that are applying are going to be considered on their skills, not only if they are having or not a disability. I think, Wolfgang, did you want to add anything there? I almost cannot find better words, you know? It's like, <laughs> I, I had two things in mind. First one was that guy said, um, it's about accessibility that many mainstream job boards do not care enough about accessibility. So there is uh, a part of the group uh, excluded, so we need to take care of this. And the second thought was exactly what Gabriel said. Um, we create a surrounding where you can be more open, which is very important because um, um, according to our statistics, 80% of disabilities are not visible. And a big part of them um, do not want to communicate that there is a disability in place, but maybe there should, you know? So. The best situation in our point of view is that both sides can be very open because with that you can cover best in the, the, the needs in the best way and you can manage your employees in the best way when you know what everyone needs. And um, one consequence of, of uh, running these uh, job boards for people with disabilities is that it creates openness in a, at an earlier stage. And uh, companies can on the one hand rely that if there is, are applicants that there is a disability in most cases there and on the other hand the applicants can be more open and uh, as long as they are, uh, are on, on other job boards uh, as long as it's not like that it's very important to, to have this in place. And certainly from our experience many people with disabilities need to be persuaded that there's a chance of getting a job if they go to one of your job boards. Exactly. So that's where the need to get this communication between the employer and people with disabilities so that they can see that actually there's a there is a point to it. Yeah. Now I see that Frederick has joined us from uh, Riziki. For the last session that we have here, I was going to just quickly ask members of the Alliance, as we grandly call ourselves, capital A, um, what is your what do you think in terms of what this this network can achieve? What should our priorities be for the next six to 12 months? What's kind of the most important, what has to be done for us? Who do we want to tell what to? What do we want to change? So who do I start with? Frederick, have you got a sense of who you, what the top priorities should be for this group? And you've got 30 seconds. Yeah, I can give it a try. Uh, so, um, um, top priority for me is how do we bring on the table as a priority the fact that persons with disability who are job seeking should also be considered, and and all uh, job platforms or whoever is recruiting should have uh, as their priority to consider persons with disability in terms of recruitment. So, how do we reach out to? Uh, big companies, anyone who is um, an employer so that they understand, but also be able to be uh, supported in terms of um, how do you do this in a manner that is respectful to the job seeker who has a disability? Well, the, the communications, the big messages, I mean, obviously this group will have to look at that very carefully. Thank you very much. Okay. I guess our main goal should be to be able to talk about recruitment <laughs> because this group got together uh, specifically to talk about job boards and we mainly been discussing more things about uh, the culture the challenges that we have to convince companies uh, to be more inclusive um, so I, I think we, we have a very uh, important goal here is how do we create a better uh, environment to, to employ people with disabilities in these big corporations. And the second one would be uh, how do you use technology to remove barriers and fairly evaluate the, the candidates? So I guess uh, we started this group with the uh, expectations of talking a lot about recruiting and we've been talking a lot about culture and it's very important that we solve first this problem and after we can go and help to scale the recruiting and the employment of people with disabilities. So we, we started even calling it a job board group but that's actually a tool isn't it? Yeah, 
the point is, what do we need to do, particularly with technology, to, in my language, change a labor market, change the way the labor market. So, absolutely. Gabrielle. So, yeah, John? No, no, I'd go right ahead, Gabrielle. John. Thank you, John. No, Gabrielle. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Okay. I will take it. So, uh, I think that our first goal here is to. Uh, we are here to solve uh, a global problem, as we mentioned before. So the best way we can do that is to share knowledge and to share what is working in Europe can maybe be beneficiary in, in Latin America or in Africa or in the States and, and vice versa. So the, I think that the goal here is to create a common platform of uh, open knowledge and also uh, giving companies and organizations who are having global presence, uh, a simple way to spread these best practices. And uh, while doing that, it is not only to good to have a good practice in the UK, for example, but if you are not able to do this uh, or, or to deliver this best practice in other regions, that the impact is small. While having this global platform, the, the goal here is that every initiative that can be global to have the, the best way to, ripple, to rapidly escalate to uh, provide global solutions to, to the problems that we are facing here. And I think that's a huge responsibility as well for us because we, at the end of the day, we are touching a lot of lives. So the best way that we can uh, share the knowledge and fully understand what's working, what's not, and the better we are going to deliver our impact. Sounds good. John? Well, I'm glad Gabriel went first because he hit exactly what I was thinking about, and that is um, we do need to see what other groups are doing, what are the best practices that are out there, which ones can we take from and apply to what we're doing in the U.S. And if we're if we're doing this across and around the world, we can really start preparing ourselves for uh, companies that are have multiple locations around the world. So I think it helps them uh, get their message together in, a, in a, a very effective way. I do like the fact that we're talking about court culture. Um, corporate culture is critical to uh, be improved and they need a lot of help in the way they're uh, positioning themselves as receptive and open and willing and ready to uh, bring on lots of different people with a lot of different skills and disabilities. So the more I learn from all of you, the more and, and better uh, we're able to serve our corporations that we work with closely. And help them to up their game. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. It's always continuous improvement is required. Good. Wolfgang, quickly before we end. It's not much more to say, um, honestly, but maybe one more, a bit more technical aspect. I would also be interested in in learnings on the technical level. No, how how do you run your your site? How do you make them completely or almost fully uh, accessible? What are your tips and tricks in order to reach the group in the best way? Is there online marketing tools in place, social media uh, agencies, network building, co-creation projects, all these kind of things? So it's like a, in a more technical level or detail level. Uh, I think we could have many learnings for each other. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much then. I think that brings us to the end of our allotted time. I just wanted to stress from my perspective, I see an opportunity if we can help the corporates to design a best practice standard that lifts them above trying to comply with legislation in any given country. You know, that compliance message, I'm only going to treat you properly if I have to. Well, the work you're doing on cultures will lift us with luck well above that. So thank you very much. We're now, I know, going to move into a Q&A session. And so I'm going to say thank you and draw us to a close. Thank you very much.